Now let's work on problems involving ratios and proportions. Let's start with this one. A certain island contains 540 cats and 675 dogs. What is the ratio of cats to dogs on this island? One way in which we could do so is by setting up a fraction. Since cats came first, we're going to put it on the top of the fraction. And dogs came second, so we're going to put that on the bottom. So there's 540 cats and 675 dogs. Ratios and fractions, they're interconvertible. You can put a ratio into a fraction, or you can convert a fraction back into a ratio. Right now, what we need to do is simplify this fraction. Now, because the last number of 540 and 675 contains either a 0 or a 5, both numbers are divisible by 5. Five forty divided by five is one hundred eight. Six seventy five divided by five is one thirty five. Now we need to simplify this further if possible. So what number goes into one hundred eight and one thirty five? Well, let's find out. It turns out that both of these numbers is divisible by nine. 108 divided by 9 is 12. 135 divided by 9 is 15. Now we can reduce it even further. 12 is 4 times 3. 15 is 5 times 3. And so we could cancel a 3. So the ratio of cats to dogs is 4 to 5. Or we can write it like this using a colon. So that's it for this problem. Now let's move on to number two. The ratio of boys to girls in a class is eight to seven. If there are 40 boys, how many girls are there in the class? So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna put the information relating to the boys on the left side and the information relating to the girls on the right side. We need to set up a proportion. We need to write two fractions separated by an equal sign. Now the ratio of boys to girls is eight to seven. So that means that if there are eight boys in a class, there's going to be seven girls in that same class. Now, if there's 40 boys in a class, how many girls or X will be in that same class? So this is the formula that we need to solve. Let's cross multiply. So this is going to be 8 times x, and that's going to equal 40 times 7. Now, we could multiply 40 by 7. 4 times 7 is 28. Add the 0, you get 280. But it's easier if we rewrite 40 as 8 times 5. Notice that we can cancel an 8. So on the left side, all we have is an x left over. On the right side, it's going to be 5 times 7, which is 35. So if there are 40 boys in a class, there's going to be 35 girls in that same class. And you could think about it conceptually. So let's say we have the ratio 8 to 7, and we want to expand it to 40 to some unknown number. To go from 8 to 40, we need to multiply by 5. So therefore, to keep the ratio the same, we need to multiply 7 by 5, which will give us 35. And that's a quick way to get the answer mentally, um, if you see it that way. Try this one. Karen can make 14 cakes in 6 hours. How many cakes can she make in 15 hours. So what do you think we need to do to solve this problem? Well, let's set up a proportion. There's two things that we're dealing with. The number of cakes that she can make and the time 
in which he can make them. So once again, let's put two fractions separated by an equal sign. So she can make 14 cakes in six hours. So how many cakes, which means x, that's what we're trying to solve for, can she make in 15 hours? So all of the information associated with time is on the right side, and the information associated with cakes is on the left side. And since 14 cakes correspond to six hours, these two things are on the top of the fraction. The other stuff has to be on the bottom. So now let's cross multiply. This is going to be 6 times x, and that's going to equal 14 times 15. Now 14 times 15 is 210. So now, in order to separate 6 from x, we need to divide them. We need to divide both sides by 6. So it's going to be 210 divided by 6, which is 35. So in 15 hours, she can make 35 cakes. So that's the answer. Now let's see if we can do it the fast way. So the ratio of cakes to hours is initially 14 to 6. And we want to know how many cakes, or x, she can make in 15 hours. So we have these two numbers. What do we need to multiply 6 by to get to 15? 6 times what number is 15? If you're not sure, divide. 15 by 6 is 2.5. So you got to multiply 6 by 2.5 to get to 15. Likewise, to find x starting from 14, you must also multiply that by 2.5. 14 times 2.5 will give us the same answer, which is 35. Number 4. The length and width of a small rectangle is 9 inches and 8 inches, respectively. The length of the large rectangle is 24 inches. If the length and the width of the two rectangles have the same ratio, what is the width of the large rectangle? Well, let's set up a proportion. So we have the large and the small rectangle. Now let's say the top portion represents the length of the two rectangles and the bottom part of the two fractions represents the width. So the length and the width of the small rectangle, the length is 9 inches, and the width of the small rectangle is 8 inches. Now for the large rectangle, the length is 24. Our goal is to calculate the width of the large rectangle. So let's put an x. Now let's cross multiply. So this is going to be 9x, and that's equal to 8 times 24. So 8 times 24, actually before we do that, let's write 9 as 3 times 3, and 24 as 8 times 3, because this will help us to give our answer as a fraction, so we can get an exact answer as opposed to a decimal value. So right now we have 3x on the left, 8 times 8 is 64. Now, let's divide both sides by 3. 3 doesn't go into 64, so we can leave our answer as 64 over 3. So that is the exact answer of the width of the rectangle. But if you want to turn that into a decimal, this is about 21.3. Or you could say 21.3 repeated. And the units, inches. So that's it for uh, this problem. Number five, the ratio of nickels, dimes, and quarters in a jar is three to four to seven, respectively. If there are a total of 112 coins in the jar, how many of them are nickels? 
So this is a multi-step problem. Feel free to pause the video and try it. So we can set up many fractions to get the answer. We're going to have nickels, quarters, dimes, or let me put nickels, dimes, quarters. Let me follow uh, what we have here. And then I'm going to add another category. That is the total. So in this case, we're going to have four fractions. On top, I'm going to put the ratio. If there are three nickels, there's going to be four dimes and seven quarters. In this case, the total number of coins will be three plus four plus seven. That's going to be 14. So this is based on the ratio. On the bottom, I'm going to put the actual number of coins in the jar. The total number of coins in the jar is 112. Now, I can calculate the number of nickels, dimes, or quarters. It doesn't matter. However, we want to focus on the number of nickels. So we can put an X here. Or if you want to, you can put N for nickels. So all I need to do is set this fraction equal to this one. So 3 over N is equal to 14 over 112. Now, let's say if I wanted to calculate the number of dimes, I would put D for dimes and set these two equal to each other and solve for D. Or if I want to solve for the number of quarters, I would set these two fractions equal to each other. So I can calculate the number of dimes, nickels, or quarters, um, whichever I want in this problem. But let's focus on N. So let's cross multiply. This is going to be 14 times N. And that's going to equal 3 times 112. 3 times 112 is 336. Now let's divide both sides by 14. 336 divided by 14 is 24. So there's 24 nickels in this jar. And so that's it for this problem. By the way, if you want to find a rest, here's what you can do at this point. Let's write our ratios of nickels, dimes, quarters, and the total. So it's 3 to 4 to 7 to 14. Now, for nickels, we have 24 in the bottom. To go from 3 to 24, we need to multiply by 8. And if we multiply 14 by 8, that will give us 112, the total number of coins. To find the total number of dimes, we need to multiply 4 by 8. 4 times 8 is 32. And to find the number of quarters, it's going to be 7 times 8, which is 56. And you could check it. If we add 24, 32, and 56, it should give us the total number of coins in the jar, which is 112. So there's 24 nickels, 32 dimes, and 56 quarters.